Disability History, Panel 12, 1924 through 1934. Parents Organize. Parents assert their leadership and begin to organize on behalf of children with disabilities. Societal Values. Greater Acceptance of Differences. Willingness and Ability to Address Social Problems. Moral Viewpoint Parents of children with disabilities began organizing in the 1930s. By 1950, following the interruptions of economic depression and war, 88 local groups with total membership of 19,300 persons had been established in 19 states. In September of 1950, the National Association for Retarded Children was formed during a conference in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Connection to Different Time in History At the insistence of persons with disabilities, the organization later changed its name to the National Association for Retarded Citizens. It is now known as the ARC. Stereotype Persons with developmental disabilities as eternal children. Viewed as children who never grow up. Capable of doing no wrong and wanting only to be loved. This message was reinforced in the early parents' movement's focus on helping the retarded child. The concept of mental age, equating one's IQ with years of age, further reinforced this stereotype. Moral Viewpoint Elizabeth Boggs was an early leader of the parents' movement and one of the people responsible for creating the term developmental disabilities. Connection to different time in history. The term developmental disability was adopted in the early 1970s to address disability and funding issues in more comprehensive terms. It originally referred to persons with a range of disabilities including mental retardation, cerebral palsy, epilepsy, and other neurologically handicapping conditions. The term intended to qualify persons for funding was expanded in 1978 to cover a wider area of disabilities and life activities. Moral Viewpoint Dale Evans Rogers' book, Angel Unaware, and Pearl S. Buck's The Child Who Never Grew, both widely read, perpetuated the view of all persons with developmental disabilities, young and old, as eternal children. The message of these books was twofold. All families, rich or poor, can have children with disabilities, and persons with mental retardation are really just children. Buck placed her child in an institution. Dale Evans Rogers' child died very young. She suggested that children with mental retardation are special angels, serving a divine purpose that is lost in institutions. Moral Viewpoint at first, parents came together a few at a time, usually in someone's home. At her brother's request, Eunice Kennedy Shriver authored an article that appeared in the Saturday Evening Post, talking about their sister Rose, who has mental retardation, and how their family adjusted. The article was read by millions and further convinced parents that having a child or sibling with mental retardation was nothing to feel shame or guilt over. Moral Viewpoint In one state, a parent looked for support by placing an advertisement in the local newspaper. The newspaper initially declined to print the ad, feeling it was too controversial. After it was finally printed, the parent received over 1,000 replies. Moral Viewpoint Beyond parents offering support to one another, these groups fought for institutional reform, community services, and better education for their children. Medical Viewpoint The themes of eternal child and objects of pity have been taken to their extremes by the annual Jerry Lewis Muscular Dystrophy Telethon, with its relentless appeals to pity and heart-wrenching images of helpless poster children needing to be cured rather than accepted by society. 
Connection to different time in history. Disability activists have written and spoken out against the use of pity images in fundraising campaigns. Some activists have held their own anti-telethons promoting disability pride and culture over low expectations and paternalism. In the early 1990s, a Chicago-based group called Jerry's Orphans was started by former MDA poster children. The word cripple has been used to hurt people with disabilities and define them as unable and useless. Many activists are now reclaiming the word as an act of empowerment.